I think uh, there is a lot of work that we need to do. Those waves for a former ruling party are a natural cause. They are expected. Uh, because for now, people are still talking uh, about the ills of patriotic front, the injury we caused to the Zambian people in certain areas that we have already canvassed. It's still in certain areas fresh. Uh, of course, some Zambians are beginning to uh, see that, wow, I think we focused on um, minute issues other than the bigger issues of development. You know, it's like in a home. Uh, you are married to a beautiful lady, she takes care of you in many other aspects. But in the case of she is not also cooking okra properly. But if you are a child, you are a child. So, if you are a child, you are a child. You are a child. How I can't have this uh, as my wife. You know, she can't even cook okra properly. She can't even cook uh, what you call uh, fish and the rest of the things properly. Why not go for fish? Umo na weni send then. Ni mo na ka suz na ka fara ko nko koro shared na ka t-shirt ka red. No fu ma send na ma upo masa sangati. No mbabo mu pire ko ena. Ama dai pa wabi kafe kupido. You know, tea. Nothing else they can, she can cook. Then you begin to remember, you know, my wife used to clean and would help each other clean our bedrooms, everything, the house was neat and so on. The only thing is it was Ifisashi na nomulembu. That's when you realize that out of the 100%, she may have just been 40 for 10%. So you were ready to throw away 90% because of 10%. I know that the Zambian people now, they have realized, yes, PF had 20% of agri things that we're doing, but the 80% of patriotic front benefited the Zambian people in terms of development and so on. So we were kicked out because of 20%. <laughs> but the, the new Susie they have married, uh, with red in Kokoro and the red t-shirt, because everything, whether it is fuel, whether it is minimum, commodities, when, even now when it comes to arrogance, PF was beginning to become arrogant 10 years into office. I just took five months. Look at the uh, presidential spokesperson. Even me, uh, if you ask me to, to shift into state house, I can't go there. This level of arrogance is out of this world. But they are coming with a with straight face to tell us, I have never done that. I have never met that one. I have never done. So we are about to get a grand, grand uh, lie from the top man himself addressing the nation on Monday, the 25th. Today, <laughs> Lolela. So, you know, your binoculars um, have been very, very busy mm. the past week. And uh, they zoomed in on some very interesting things. Uh, you know, the meeting between uh, you know um, mr milingo and um, the presidency because mm. you allege that in a meeting you know between uh, mr milingo the presidential aides they are, the the president was also present but the president is on record yesterday coming on his uh, facebook page and you know completely rejecting this he says he did not uh, you know, have any meeting of the sort. Is the binoculars accurate in it? zooming or are you just, uh, you know, just zooming anyhow without having facts on the table? Because the president has refused. You see, one of the gifts that liars have mm. is that uh, they are smooth talkers. Mm. I actually advise my sisters and the ladies that care to listen. When you find a man 
that is a smooth talker. He has an answer to everything. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to be a little careful. Mm -hmm. These colleagues in the UPND are smooth talkers. Mm -hmm. And that's how come they convinced the Zambian people on points they were arguing that never had substance. They used a lot of English words but said nothing. Later on, they began to promise bluntly telling the Zambian people lies. And they are hoping that they can continue on that trajectory and the Zambian people will buy into that now that they are in government. They are forgetting that at the time they were lying, it was a promissory note. It had not been tested. Therefore, they had the excuse of saying, if it remember to Kachita, it's just that we are not in government. That excuse they don't have, they are now in government. This time they have to present to the Zambian people reality. Now, after we zoomed, as it were, and uh, we saw what was going on from last year, in October, we had given Mr. Aka Inde Ichirema an opportunity to demonstrate whether he means well and what he's doing is in what? In the interest of the nation. A meeting was held between the liquidator, the provisional liquidator, Mr. Miringolongo, the president, the vice president, the minister of finance, and the principal private secretary, Mr. Bradford Machina. We already knew. But we felt that what was at stake at that particular stage was a national asset. One of the biggest assets we have as a country, KCM. One of the largest mines that we have in Zambia, Konkola Copper Mine. And I can tell you that the decision that we, Patriotic Front, in government made to get that mine from Vendetta was a correct decision. There could be other arguments in terms of the process, but the reality is that Vendetta was abusive, not only to the people on the copper belt and the workers, but also the fact that uh, even the transaction to give Vendetta that, that uh, mine has even ended as international ridicule on how the transaction was taken. And the Vendetta has been boasting internationally that Zambians are foolish in the sense that I got this mine for a song, I didn't, I didn't even pay for it. I had to go and use the same mine to raise funds and give the Zambian people, is it 25 million, you know, uh, dollars. But look at the lives of the people in Chingola, the lives of the people in Chiravombo and Copper Belt in general and the Zambian people through the evasion of taxes and so on. There was no benefit whatsoever. Okay. They tried to contest the decision by government to repossess the mine. Of course, court process took place, and by court order, Mr. Meningo was appointed. Now, there's a change of government. But let me speak to the fact that during the tenure of Mr. Meningo, government was able to generate income to a tune of $1.4, $1.2 billion. Inonshita Vanakiwe, Dr. Msokotwani has been turned into a postman who's trotting every day in the morning to go and check at the post office whether there is a letter from IMF. If that letter doesn't come, we're doomed. If that letter comes and says, yeah, we're going to give you a deal, and what deal is that? Begging for $1.4 billion with conditions. That's what Msukotwane has, has provided himself for the past eight to nine months now, from the time he was appointed. Going to the post office to check about that letter from IMF. Even if the deal came, that deal will come with conditions that will affect you and me and the ordinary Zambians. All of us ordinary Zambians are going to be in problems because we hear that the conditions are going to be harsh. 
even the employment of teachers, health workers and so on, it looks like has become a great concern which has delayed this whole transaction to take place. But the iron of it, which is laughable, is that we are fighting among ourselves over the, the uh, quote-unquote money that was paid to the liquidator, which they are trying to brand as the money that has been stolen. When in fact, when you look at the court documents, the court documents are speaking to the fact that this person was entitled to 10%. Now, if he was entitled to 10%, just as a lay person, he has generated through the resource that was coming from KCM, $1.2 billion. 10% of that is $120 million. The guy is being pursued for money that he, was, he paid himself 4.4 million kwacha. No, 4.4 million kwacha. A 4.4 million kwacha could be somewhere around 200 and something thousand dollars. He has paid himself 17 point something million kwacha. Less than a million dollars. No, but he has generated that kind of income. It doesn't make sense, logical sense. That's how come for me, I didn't think criticizing President HH for meeting Minungu to try and negotiate a settlement. I thought it was in the interest of the state and the interest of the nation. For me, the reason why we zoomed and in, in this case exposed what was going on is because these people were not ready to man up. When the negotiations took place from the president himself meeting Minungu, he scaled down to his aides and the office of attorney general. You understand what I'm saying? The lady that they're trying to victimize the DPP came into the picture later because her job was to prosecute based on the accusation so that the guy can prove himself in court that he's innocent. And the, the principle under which you operate as Zambians is that you are innocent until you proven what? Guilty. So the, it's a poverty mentality of Zambians that the UPN they are taking advantage of. Because for even a Zambia, they never imagine a fellow black having money. So if you hear, even if I've been doing business all my life, if somebody went to the media and just said, Nakachinda has uh, 10 million quarter in his account, Zambian people's reaction is an aliva. Because we never imagine that a fellow Zambian, particularly a black person, can have that kind of money. Utuman Tutu Achabe Tawetuma Chinese who were criminals in their country, they were prisoners in their country, they come here and I'm a Bambafi, and they come and would wink us into some deals. And in the process, Masangati, Naga quarter 10 million more account. We clap for them, but we condemn fellow Africans, fellow Zambians when they are reported to have money. So what is working here is not even about the fight against corruption. Ni jealous if you are called to the ah, so Boma Nakwatanga and Am Sangoria, because as far as we are concerned, the Ingroku Churanga you win, even when he's working hard. So that is what is working here. It, it, are you telling me that Aka Indechirema is the only wise man in this country who tells us that he has the money that is purported to have because he sees the opportunities? Ewa kwata feyame and soyama opportunities. The rest of us are just useless. We don't think. We can't utilize any opportunity. He say, you know, I laugh at Zambians. Muli nchumaka jita no ma Zambians si biyabi maningi. Maria said, "If you put two people on the board, you will never have plastic. If you make one more, you will have to go to the state house." That is what is causing a problem in this country. Two two, you never imagine another person to have what you have. That kind of mentality can never be found in state house because, as a head of state, you are supposed to be wishing your citizens prosperity and working towards the improvement of their lives. No, 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 no.